The Kong of the Mwantle region of Southwest Africa are a hunting gathering people. Bows and poisoned arrows are their important pieces of hunting equipment. Their word for bow is now. Arrow is chi. The bows are about 40 inches in length before being bent, about 38 inches from tip to tip when the string is taut. The arrows vary in overall length from about 18 to 23 inches. They are not feathered. Although the bows are alike in basic design and arrows are also alike, their several components vary in proportion and make each piece individual. The upper arrow is completely assembled. Below it are the separate components. From right to left, the first component, the point, is a single piece of wire or other malleable metal shaped into a three to four inch shank and flattened at the end to a barbed triangular point which is about half an inch long. The second component is a connecting piece, about an inch long, made of pannikin grass, called plama by the krong. A piece of small diameter is chosen. The metal shank, with sinew wrapped around the end to make it fit and adhere, is inserted into one end. The third component, a piece of bone, or sometimes wood, smoothed and tapered to fit perfectly, is inserted into the other end. The fourth component is a shaft of strong, light reed, ngo. At one end is an internode, which is notched. The other end is hollow. In diameter, it is large enough to slip over one end of the tapered bone piece. Three different kinds of reeds are used for arrows. Phragmites communis, Andropogon gyanus, and Panicum. The first three components, comprising the foreshaft, are stuck firmly together with a yellow gum called ton, sap from an acacia tree. The reed shaft is shown separated from the foreshaft. This end of the bone piece is not gummed, and the arrow is designed to come apart here. If an animal runs through bushes or rubs against a tree, the reed shaft can be brushed off and will fall away, leaving the poisoned foreshaft embedded in the animal. The materials used in the equipment are not believed to have magic properties, nor is anything done to them for magical purposes. A fine knowledge of the characteristics of the materials and careful workmanship are what the Kung depend on. Kung society has no specialists. Each man makes his own equipment. To make the metal point, Kao Medicine pounds a length of heavy wire against the stone and flattens the end into a little beveled triangle. The metal is worked cold and is hardened by the pounding. Kao shapes and sharpens the point in a stone. The Trung obtain metal for the arrow points, axes, knives, and a few other tools by trade with the Bantu-speaking Negro tribes, the Tswana and Herero, who live along the Bechuanaland border, some 50 miles east of Gaucha. The Trun give in exchange ostrich egg shell beads made by the Bushman women and well-tanned hides. Barbs, which the Trun call ears, 